Let me bring uh, Tom Olson in now. He's uh, trying to join the conversation. I see your hands up, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Uh, no, it's a very interesting discussions we have. Um, and uh, I know both countries uh, quite well, probably so Sudan more, having been interacting with Fiona since I think back in 2016. Um, but I think both for as a UN entity and, and, and the importance of the low cluster, um, I'm not so sure I would argue for that we should set a time bound on it. And I think it's more about the needs. And, but of course, over time, situation change. So it's more about how flexible are we as an organization to, to change, either when you're looking at the, the needs and, and task uh, which is expected and the structure to support the task. And, and I think it's more about how we are able to, to change and through the scope and how we bringing uh, through training and other modalities, uh, additional civil society into the structure. But I still believe that the coordination, um, that the log cluster and other UN agency needs to have a core structure in place that can, because I think the, 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 the importance of the UN entity to, to be able to be present and to coordinate and interact with the government uh, together with civil society and others is extremely important. So I would rather argue saying that over time, both for South Sudan, Syria and other places, it's more about flexibility in terms of adding additional human resources to the structure through civil society or through organizations which we have trained. Uh, and then sitting left with our, uh, with our with a core structure of, of low cluster. I, I think the low cluster is extremely important in, in situations uh, like that. And well, what, what, so, sorry to interrupt, but what, what yeah. we heard yesterday from the Central African Republic, um, there was suggestion that local humanitarian actors didn't see the point of cooperation. And, that, and we certainly heard from Mike from the Red Cross, who said that you need to identify added value. People, you know, local actors need to see there's added value in cooperation. So how do you demonstrate that? And how do you, um, do, do you make it clear that there is an added value? to them well I, I don't know car that well so i guess it goes from country to country and situation to situation uh but i will argue strongly in those circumstances i've been interacting working closely with the low cluster um uh, and like i said particularly in in, uh, in uh, so sudan i think they are well recognized you have a solid competent leadership in 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 that office and I think that goes for all of us. If, if, if it comes down to leadership, it comes down to visibility, it's like you said, added value. Uh, and, and that might, might vary from, from country to country. And that I think goes for all of us. So it comes down to the skill set of staff. It comes into the experience of staff. And that's where I think when you're going in as a coordination, uh, as a low cluster, you need to have highly trained, highly competent and highly experienced staff and then i'm not talking about age but i'm talking about experience and and i'm having been around the block as we say but so i think that is one of the things thank you very much indeed tom let, let me um see whether karina from medair has got uh, uh, some comments that she'd like to make uh, if you'd like to open your microphone karina from medair and yes. open your open your camera as well we'd love to see you <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so as Kathy mentioned, my name is Karina, and I do work with Meta. I've just been in South Sudan uh, in January and February. And just to build on what has been said, I think the important point here is that the mandate of the logistics cluster is to offer last resort support when there's really too much struggle for an individual organization to put something in place. And to me, what I experienced is that really one of one of the points and I'd like to mention is that the, the thinking process towards alternative solutions is something that we need to and I'm talking specifically about South Sudan um, sort of re inject into the system. What I see from my colleagues is that the logistics clusters that have been mentioned is really well regarded and is a, an amazing support and it's really a needed support but by the fact that it's simply there and in a way relatively easy to use, um, just the thinking process around, might there be another solution, another option, maybe also 
by coordinating just with other humanitarian actors, it's maybe not necessarily there. So, so how, do you, how do you then create that necessity for that conversation? How do you make people realize they have to have that conversation? Yeah, I mean, there's all the coordination meetings also including the logistics cluster, for example. And I think those coordination meetings can be a great platform to sort of start that conversation. And I think where we're then heading to is also towards more planning or potentially also towards pre-positioning in South Sudan specifically, as it also has been mentioned. Um, the air cargo and flights and helicopters is a massive part of the operation, of course, very expensive. So if you get the organizations who ship into a certain area uh, at one table and try to consolidate what they're trying to ship, maybe it can be reduced from five flights to three, which is already a big um, achievement. And it will save uh, financial means, of course, but also like all the environmental impact and everything that is then linked to it. Um, can really be improved. Okay, so um, if you had one thing to ask of this audience today, uh, to try to not necessarily to help, particularly in, in, only in South Sudan, but in you know the, the, just the whole idea of the, these protracted crises, right. what what needs to happen to to really make a difference in the future? Um, not sure. I fully understand your question, but my answer to this would be: How can how can we get to a point where we utilize the capacity of the logistics cluster really only where we, let's say, cannot help ourselves as an international community? How do we, how do we get there to really rely on the logistics clusters for situations where it's really needed uh, and super important, but still have that mindset of uh, evaluating whether there might be another option? So it's always just looking for other options. Um, Christoph, there, there are one or two, I, I, one or two questions coming in on um, Menti here about Syria. And in the meantime, I wonder whether uh, Leonardo from uh, Intersos, I think you want to join the conversation. So if you could open your camera and your microphone. Um, Christoph, um, somebody says, what is the objective of the local, local SAG for cross-border and who are the participants? Um, and are there any major physical access uh, um, road he, uh, rehab gaps? Um, what else are they asking? Um, yeah, well, if just give us a little bit more of, a, of the sort of context of the things that, that, that what's happening in, in, in Syria at the moment, maybe you can see some of these questions, quite a lot of very specific questions coming in on Syria. Are you planning to take over any um, depot facilities or common logistics services to the local community? Well, sorry, well, uh, uh, I'm not really quite sure. I follow like 100% like the, 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 the question. There is something like on the local side. So I guess they're referring to the cross border, the cross border. So the, for like the colleagues like uh, operating from Gaziantep, facilitating the, the humanitarian cargo going into the Northeast. And the other one is like the physical access. If there is like uh, any road, uh, road uh, gaps uh, yeah, in terms currently. Of, yeah. Okay. So maybe quickly the on the on the local SAG, uh, it's ongoing. We should have like the the, the election. I think uh, around May. I don't really have the. I don't remember the the, the, the dates on top of my head. But it should be happening like uh, in around May. So it's ongoing. Uh, we have shared like the TOR after being revised uh, in country with the, with the help of our colleagues from the HQ. So has been shared with like the, the key partner. So it should be, uh, it should be rolling out like, uh, I would say like uh, in May. Uh, now in terms of like physical access, uh, since the arrival of uh, my deputy Christophe Vial operating in, in Gaziantep, we, <clears throat> sorry, we have indeed kind of like a, a broaden up a bit like the scope of work for the logistic cluster uh, in the sense of like now we engage more and more with like a, a partner like partner or like a sister UN agency such as like UNDP to try to evaluate uh, and we produce on monthly basis or mostly basis like an access constraint map where we map out like only the, the structure of the road. Uh, our main focus because we know that UNDP is working with the early recovering uh, recovery uh, cluster, they do working on our rehabilitation on the roads, which is not really the work of the Lucy cluster. What we're looking at is more for the emergency, such as like during the flood or winter, try to see like if we can spot some, uh, some key uh, roads. So now the answer is like, if we know from uh, uh, as of today, 
what are the physical constraints to access, we do have the map, but the thing will change maybe over the course of the months. Like now summer is coming up, so we should have less uh, difficulties. What, we're going, what, what we know from the fact now, every time when winter is coming, which is obviously like uh, any place in the world where the winters, uh, it's synonym with like uh, rain or snow or whatsoever, we know that we're gonna have issues. Then we raise the signal and try to over here, like engage with UNDP or the other partner to say, okay, flood might coming up. We do have the map for like uh, where the IDP's camps are. So this is where we're gonna focus our attention and work with the partner. Okay, I don't thank know if you. you answer more or less, yeah. Well, I think that probably answer the questions for, for the person who put those questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Leonardo, Leonardo from Intersos, good to see you. Thank you for joining our conversation. Um, so let's just talk in, in, ge in general terms. Where did, what do you see, think that partners could do to help in, in deactivating um, cluster operations when it's getting to the point where the, there's an, an, an attempt to localize and it's really important to try to bring about that localization? Hello, good, good morning, everybody. Uh, I wanted just to thank Sir Christophe, first, first of all, because he replied to the first question on, on Syria. It was uh, done by me. And actually, the collaboration with the logistic cluster is amazing in Syria, as in the other country, but particularly Syria, with our uh, small uh, NGO, NGO. And actually, he, he touched the point the, during his reply when he was saying that uh, the coordination by, by us, it has to be done uh, before to launch some some, uh, some activities. Actually, on that, uh, we have some uh, issues about health programs, but we are in touch with the logistic cluster and we are trying to find out uh, some solutions about particularly the, um, the international procurement. At the same time, my question was for not technical support because as Christophe knows much better than me, uh, in Syria, there are some delays uh, that are really taking more than months and months by the local authorities. And I, I suppose, uh, because I'm sharing uh, some information with the other uh, logisticians of the other international NGOs, uh, more or less, let's say that uh, the difficulties are for all of us the same. So if it would be possible and uh, if it, is part of the mandate of logistic cluster. I, I don't know, maybe to 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 collect all these type of uh, difficulties by by us and to try to find out a, a common solution with the local authorities. But so far, really, really, the support. Uh, uh, I mean, talking about particularly Syria right now is amazing for us, and we really thanks uh, to Christoph. Just for just this, it was uh, the main focus uh, of of the, my question. Thanks. But 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 Leonardo, can I just ask you though, yeah. w if you see sure. to the to the future, and if we're talking about trying to um, see an exit strategy in some countries for um, for the cluster with localization, um, what what more support do you need then um, to be able to enable that to happen? Uh, I think I don't think that I don't see more support is needed from uh, from from our side to request to the logistic cluster. I think that uh, we have to 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 sit down all together and to think about how we can do it. I mean, uh, I don't see some lacks of support by logistic cluster so far on that. Definitely, it is something that uh, it will take a long, long time, uh, in particular in some countries. Uh, I mean, the, the, the countries that were chosen are extremely difficult. If you think about Nigeria, South Sudan, and Central African Republic, and Yemen, <laughs> no, sorry, and Syria, definitely are some of the most difficult. And maybe we can add even something like um, uh, Venezuela and Colombia, uh, Venezuela and Colombia, for, because because of similar situation, uh, if you compare with Syria, uh, maybe we have to to definitely to ac to to welcome the, the the offer done by Gilles yesterday and today, that is to participate as much as possible to review of the of the strategic vision. Working on that, definitely uh, we can shift even and to think about the exit strategy and how to connect more to the local auto, uh, to the local uh, NGO. Definitely. Okay, so, lovely. Then, but so that's important. That uh, yes, to to coordinate and to take part in 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 those sort of sessions. Let me bring in uh, Takuya Ono, who's has hand up here. 
Hi. Um, Hi. Thank you for uh, the uh, presentation. I work for IOM and um, currently a headquarter uh, focal point to the global logistic cluster. Uh, since IOM is really active, both uh, cross-border operation in Gaziantep to Syria and then South Sudan. So I just thought maybe I can provide a few comments. So I think that uh, uh, one part of the X strategy would be the um, more the analyze what the activities, uh, what which logistic cluster supporting. So probably cross coordination with the shelter cluster or wash cluster. Uh, of course, the new nutrition like food cluster that those are uh, what are the uh, uh, requirements uh, upcoming. Maybe the uh, discussion with, uh, of course, the UN country team probably would be sufficient. And then, uh, yeah, those and yeah, those things I wanted to bring it up. But uh, we really appreciate the logistic cluster coordination. That is really a, a good uh, opportunity for us to bring all issues uh, on the field level. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, Alexander from uh, PAH, Polish NGO, are you with us? Yes, hello. Hello there, hi. You can see me. Yeah. Oh, can so, see actually. so your yours will end up being more or less the last comment. So let, just just try and, and give us some sense of how you think that partners could play a greater role in in getting getting exit strategies from difficult countries. Um, I mean, basing on that example of South Sudan, because that's where we started this kind of cooperation. We were discussing last year with the partners. Um, more cooperation among themselves, not only the logistics cluster. And uh, the logistics cluster role would be to facilitate this, to empower more, especially these small organizations, uh, to bring them to the table for the discussion. Uh, because the will is there. I, I wouldn't say that partners don't want to discuss, they do. It's just a matter of getting them started. Um, and only this way we can get prepared for the moment when the logistics cluster will not be there anymore, although I hope that's not going to happen very soon, uh, because the, the help we're receiving is tremendous. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed. Um, could, and uh, Carolina, are you still with us from um, South Sudan? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, Where are you? I just wondered whether whether you and whether Christophe uh, do I uh, just have very briefly a couple of last words because this session was about your countries in sp uh, specifically. Um, so, how do you feel about about um, about the future then in terms of uh, you know just trying to build up these partnerships and build up um, a sort of a much stronger local presence, Carolina? Uh, yes. Um, I would like to um, just maybe uh, summarize by saying that through even organizing training, what was uh, uh, very clear uh, is that the logistics cluster is a community of practice, and as Alexandra for, from PAH uh, mentioned, there is a big will for partners to color, collaborate, discuss uh, logistics challenges. So we also used uh, the training as a forum for uh, sharing uh, experience, uh, good or bad, and um, and I would like to stress that even though uh, in South Sudan we do not have the exit uh, strategy yet, or we cannot really start uh, planning it yet, um, we will continuously uh, review and assess uh, the, the gaps or maybe um, uh, the need for services, uh, for provision of logistics services. Okay, thank you. And um, thank you very much. And Christoph, um, you've got your gaps and needs exercise underway now. Um, what do you think? I mean, will there be any big surprises there? What, what do you think that will reveal? All right. Thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, okay, on the GNA, uh, I will not go into too much detail. This is for us, this is a very good opportunity, again, like to, uh, to, to work out. I mean, as the, the title says, like, like the, to, to identify the gaps and the needs from the partner. So one more time, again, one more time, the key th success of carrying out a like, GNA exercise, which is like very time consuming. Christoph, just, let really me just, just interrupt. That just Could you yeah. just talk, talk a bit slower because the interpreters are, are having problems? <laughs> ah, 
Okay, sorry. Yeah, this is, you know, I'm coming from the south of France. We already know, naturally speak fast. So Super. on the GNA, sorry, on the GNA, uh, what I would say is like, uh, it's, it's a very good opportunity uh, to work with the partner and the logistic cluster and the logistic cluster to identify the potential gaps and, and work out on the strategy and the potential phasing out or like opportunities. So one of the key things I would ask for the partner is like really a strong engagement a uh, strong commitment from the partner uh, to be open-minded and, and uh, to bring up like some, uh, some frank discussion. So that having said that, there is also something I saw like one more time, know that there is a big gap sometimes, or there is a gap, maybe remove the big, uh, between the HQ and the feed level. One more time, as I was saying earlier, the chain of command, uh, we couldn't really talk about the chain of command broken between the, the HQ, but the feed level, but I've seen sometimes, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the key messages from the HQ doesn't reach down to the logistic officer or the log or the supply chain officer. So that would be something that it would be good also like for the partner from the HQ to make sure that the people on the ground have the full pictures uh, and the skills like to really work out on the GNA. So the GNA, strong commitment from the partner and active participation will be the key. Uh, thanks to Peter and the colleagues already, we have carried out, uh, we have started the GNA, it's not finished yet. Uh, so we start to, to, I think we do have like 15 or more to go. Uh, so this is ongoing well. I uh, just want to touch base briefly, if you allow me, on the question. Just very, by, uh, very my... quickly, because we, we are, we've yeah. come to the end now. And the last thing on the, on the uh, we also actively involved in the humanitarian access working group. So we had just revised like uh, last week, the TOR for the access working group. So <clears throat> this is something that's going to be very also playing a key role to advocate on behalf of the NGOs on the, any key of uh, any uh, access issues. So that's it. Thank you so much. Christoph, thank you very much. Thank you all very much indeed for all your uh, input to this session. Uh, we're going to take